There are three easy steps in creating a resume link. Let me show you how. Step 1. Register. Go to www.jobs180.com using any browser and click register now. Fill out all the information needed. In choosing your resume link, use your full name so that it looks professional and it's easy to recall by potential employers. For example, Antonio Juan de la Cruz at jobs180.com Step 2. Create and Design When creating your resume, make sure to complete your personal information and upload your profile picture. One of the highlights of the resume link is the portfolio section. In the portfolio section, you can show off your skills by uploading samples of your work like documents, pictures, videos, and your social media links. Your resume link also features different themes and you can upload a cover photo. This is a combination of a cover letter and a social network cover photo. Here is an example. You can also download a copy of your resume link and print it. Step 3. Apply for a job. There are many ways to apply with your resume link. First is browsing the job recommendations in your Jobs180 dashboard. If you're qualified, click Submit Resume Link. So what are you waiting for? Dress up your next generation resume, stand out brightly among the competitive job seekers in the market, and win the heart of your future employers using Resume Link. Good morning everyone. Welcome to today's career session. Grads Prep 2023. We are live today at Fiat University. And today we have speakers from Acts, Atsi and Aya, and Factset. So before we start, feel free to join us for the opening prayer and the national anthem.
Mga kababayan Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas Ayang magiging Pero sa sinahanan Alam ng puso Sa titik mo'y buhay Upang hinihang Tuyang ka ng magiging Sa mandulupi Di ka pasisigil Sa nagatang tutok Sa simula Sa langit mo pangraw Ay hinagang tulad Awit sa pagkaya minamahal Ang isang pangpatawa Thank you for that, Tech. Now to deliver the opening remarks, may we call on Dean Tristan H. Makapanpan, Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs, um, to give us the um, opening remarks. Dean Makapanpan, good morning po. We put you on spotlight. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, fellow Fiatinians. This is the 2023 version of Grads Prep. Now, Grads Prep has been instituted by Fiat University to prepare graduating students for life after Fiat. This means that you have to learn how to get a job and how to prosper in your job. So to, for this reason, uh, your Grads Prep uh, committee has prepared this first series of uh, seminars for you, uh, the first of which is hosted by jobs180.com, our perennial partners in this uh, uh, undertaking. So today you will be uh, getting tips on how to prepare your resume, including how to use the resume link so that uh, it will be available to future employees. Then you, we, we have to prepare you for what we might call life after FIATI. And among other things is how do you adapt to the new normal that we are facing now after the pandemic. So there will be a talk on the new era of work adapting to the new normal. And lastly, there will be a talk on how to acquire the skills that will not only uh, enable you to work successfully, but also most important, how to progress in your work, how to get promoted. So with that, I hope that you will find this uh, seminar very useful to you. And uh, we look forward to you getting jobs as soon as you graduate. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to grace our event today, sir. Thank you so much to the entire FEATI um, Grads Prep um, Committee mm -hmm. for doing this and organizing this event today. Thank you, sir. We hope you have a great day. That's a game. Again. So to everyone, um, we have a short video to play. So this is the Grads Prep um, EVP prepared by the Grads Prep Committee.
Thank you for that. So every year we see that um, we see ourselves, some of us, in the video. So thank you so much for that um, prepared um, presentation from the Gads Prep Committee. So now we officially welcome everyone. I'm Shari and I'll be hosting the event today. So to our audience, excuse me. So to our audience, would like to know where you're from. Please comment your name and course. And please be reminded that attendance and evaluation will be released at the end of this webinar. So please tag your friends so they don't miss out on this activity today. So please be advised that recordings of this webinar will be posted in the Job Trinity Facebook and YouTube channel. So if ever you want to go back to the talk or your, and, or your connection fluctuates, um, you can still rewatch on YouTube. So we would also like to acknowledge uh, Ms. Grace Chua of Ayati University for helping us organize this event. So for this morning, here is our schedule. Jobsunity.com will be um, discussing job applications using the resume link. Acts, ATSI, and AHAYA will be discussing new era of work, ad adapting to the new normal. And then FactSet will be discussing motivation, productivity, and problem-solving skills. So thank you to everyone who's here. Again, please tag your classmates so that they don't miss out on this activity. We also encourage you to put in your questions in the chat, in the comment section, where after each speaker's talk, we can do like a question and answer portion. Yeah. So welcome to our event. Um, let's go to the first speaker. So our first speaker for this morning is Sir Kim Chua. He is the Managing Director of JobsRainy.com. He has 20 years of experience in sales, marketing, business development, customer service, operations, business process, and human resources. He is a trusted resource speaker, and he has done over a 1,000 career development seminars in more than 400 plus colleges and universities nationwide. So now we give the floor to Sir Kim. Sir Kim, you know the drill, please take it away. Uh, good day to all of you. Uh, my name is Kim, Kim Chua. Don't forget the wa, baha Kim Chua lang maalala nyo. And I'm here to share to you about the most secure tool for job application. This is how you can market yourself more effectively and the different ways to do that. Okay, so let me start. Now, when you apply, you probably have a checklist uh, if you're using the right tool. So just go along with me if you have the right, uh, if you have the che same checklist that I that I have. So, ito yung mga things na like kung tinatandaan, no? Will my tool or will the, the thing that I'll be using help me to stand out? That's the first item that is very important for me. Kailangan mag-stand out ako kasi dami-dami kong kasabayan kal kalaban sa pag-apply. Another thing in my checklist is that, do I have more than one file? Because oftentimes, I have a lot of files. May academic records, may mga government IDs, and dami yung mga kailangan hingiin ng mga companies. So I'd like to put them all in one file. And this tool helps me to do that. Okay? Another thing that this tool can do is that it allows me to make the process more efficient. Mas napapabilis yung pag-apply. No? Hindi na napapatagal yung pabalik-balik. So mas mabilis din syempre tayo maka, maka move forward. Oh, diba? And another thing that this tool can do is that wala tong bayad. Oh, mga lang salesman, pero libre po ito. Okay, so this tool is absolutely for free. The most important in my checklist is that this tool, okay, makes my information secured. And I think this is the most important question. Do you want your information to be secured? I hope your answer is yes. Okay, and so with that, let me show you ano tong tool na ito. This tool is called Resume Link. Resume Link, by definition, is the most secured tool for job application. Okay, this is a personalized URL. It is a link that anyone can uh, open online anytime, provided that they know the link. So let me use an example. If you are John Santos, just in case lang, your name is John Santos, your resume link would look something like johnsantos.jobs180.com. Ganun lang kasimple. So how do you make one? Okay, how do you make one? Now, the first step is for you to register. This is absolutely for free. Wala itong bayad. Okay? So how, what, how, what do you do? You go to www.jobs180.com and that is where you now register. Okay? As you register, you just simply fill out the, the information. These are the basic information. You have the account details. You have your personal information. You have your education background. And just in case you have your work experience, whether it's OJT or it's part-time job or whatever yung uh, work experience ayan, then you proceed to that that uh, work experience page. Pero pag wala, hanggang dyan na lang tayo sa my education information. Okay? After doing so, you now uh, start to create your resume link. So, ano ba ang basihan ng resume link? Kadalasan, ang resume link natin, we base it on our name. We base it on our unique name. 
Okay, so as, as an example, if you are John Santos, then you say johnsantos.jobsonity.com. Now, what about during scenarios where you create your resume link tapos may nauna sa inyo, may ibang John Santos, may kapangalan ka, no, nauna sa inyo. Ano mangyayari? Magkakaroon na red na box, sasabihin niya, this name has already been taken. Na okay malungkot pag taken na. Okay lang, maging creative lang kayo ng konti. Pwede mo balik ta rin. Pwede mo sabihin Santos John. Okay, you can also say Santos J, o kaya J Santos, o kaya JS, di ba? Or SJ. Depende sa link na gusto mo gawin. Basta importante, wala kang kapareho kahit kayo may kapangalan. Now, another thing I'd like to emphasize here, huwag po kayong OA. Pag gumawa kayo ng resume, huwag mo gagawin tipong nakalagay, cutie pie, lover boy, Barbie doll, di ba? Because it doesn't sound professional. Imagine going to a company and your, the HR will ask you, do you have your resume? Tapos sasabihin mo sa kanya, meron po, ang resume ko ay eljablo.jobsonidiot.com. Di ba? Baka matakot yung HR sa inyo. So I don't recommend that you do something like that. Just stick to your name. Whatever your name is, it will sound professional. Okay? Now, in creating a resume link, you have to use a valid email. Emails like Yahoo, Gmail, Rocketmail, any email, basta nabubuksan nyo, wag na wag ka lang gagamit ng facebook.com na email. Okay? Do not use something like, example lang ha, patrick at facebook.com na email. Do not use patricia at facebook.com na email. Okay? In short, do not use at facebook.com na email. Because if you use at facebook.com, you will no longer be able to receive notifications being sent to you by the companies as well as jobs180.com. Okay? So use something that you can open. Why is it important for you to open your email? Because you have to verify your account. Okay? Remember, yeah, pag nag-verify, yan ang ebidensya na ikaw nag-register talaga. Yan ang proof. Diba? And at the same time, if you verify your account, then you'll be receiving notifications from the companies as well as Jobs on AT. If you do not verify your account, hindi nyo na po marireceive yung mga notification ng mga companies. So, sayang naman. Diba? Might as well verify your account first. Okay? Now, you're done, you're done with the first step after you verify. So, ano na ang second step? Ang second step is the most logical of all the steps. You have to complete all the information. Very logical. Sino sa inyo mag-apply sa mga kumpanya? Bungi-bungi detalye. Sino sa inyo magbibigay ng resume sa mga HR tapos kulang-kulang details nyo? I don't think you'll do that because you're just wasting your time. Instead, kumpletuhin yung information nyo bago kayo mag-submit dun sa mga companies. Okay? So, step two, complete the information. And how do you do that? Punta kayo ulit dun sa website, www.jobs180.com and this time, you don't need to register again kasi may account ka na eh. What you need to do is you have to log in. Okay? Now, as you log in, you start to uh, put your you put your uh, registered email or your resume link and then your password. Na ikaw lang may alam. Okay? Ganun lang siya kasimple. Now, once you're inside your account, you start to fill in the blanks. Ganun lang kasimple. Fill in the blanks. So, the things that you see here, yung mga contents, napakasimple lang. Yung mga personal details nyo, lagay mo dyan. Diba? All the information that's sitting in your relevant, you put it there. Now, I have some uh, emphasis lang on items na madalas na may miss out ito ng mga aplikante. Ano yung mga yun? Sa contact information, you have to put here all the possible ways na pwede kang makontak ng isang HR. Kagaya ng social media handles nyo. Ba't ko nasabi yan? Because in reality is, pag tinatawagan kayo ng mga HR, madalas hindi naman ina-answer eh. Lalo na pag hindi nyo kilala, pag nag-ring yung phone nyo, hala, sino kaya ito? Di ba, hindi mo kilala. Ano gagawin? Hahayaan mo na lang. Di ba, antay mo kung may mag-message sa inyo. Eh, paano kung yung HR hindi naman masipag, tuma uh, hindi masipag mag-message? Masipag lang siya magtawag. That's why I recommend you put here all the possible means na pwede kang makontact, kagaya ng social media nyo. Put your Facebook there, yung mga messenger nyo, mga Twitter nyo, iba pang mga paraan, social media handles, para mabilis kayo ma-reach out. Diba? Message-message na lang. Are you available Thursday, 10 a.m., so on and so forth. You get what I'm saying. Diba? So lahat ng paraan, lagay mo dyan. What else do you put here? You also put here yung inyong mga work options. Sa work options naman, you just choose lang, parang yes or no lang yan, parang switch, no? Kung ano yung mga options na gusto ninyo, no, willing to work night shift, willing to relocate, looking for OJT, you can also put it here. Okay? And then uh, in terms of education, obvious naman, eh, yung alma mater nyo, lagay nyo dito. Diba? Yung mga pampakapal ng resume, sa seminars attended, kahit magkopyahan pa kayo ng mga classmates mo, okay lang. Basta lang make sure, alam nyo na pag-usapan doon sa seminar na yun. Pagdating sa certification, ganun din yan, walang limit sa space yan. Achievement, uh, recommend ko dito is you don't, you don't only put uh, yung mga achievement nyo inside the school. Okay? Kasi hindi naman lahat tayo academically inclined. Some of us are not very active sa school, pero active tayo sa mga social civic organization. Diba? So, even if it's outside of the school, you can also put it there. As long as you think it is an achievement, you put it there. Okay? Now, in terms of skills and languages, isa-isahin ko lang yan, ha? sa skills, do not limit your skills dyan lang sa course nyo. Hindi perkat education ng course mo, ang ibig sabihin, ang skills na alam mo lang ay magturo. 
hindi perkat accounting ang, ang ang course mo, ang alam mo lang gawin or ang skills mo ay mag-debit credit at mag-balance sheet, di ba? So, marami kang alam na iba pa mga skills na kahit walang connect sa course, you can also put it here. Sample, photography, di ba? Videography, di ba? And all the other things, calligraphy, pwede mo ilagay diyan. Okay? When it comes to languages, I'm sure alam nyo dalawang lengguwahe na at the minimum, you know English and you know Filipino. If you know local dialect, to be specific, lagi mo Tagalog, Cabacano, Bisaya, Kapampangan, di ba? Ilonggo, wala naman limit sa space eh. Di ba? If you know foreign languages, put it there. Chinese, Japanese, French, Vietnamese, kung ano man yan, ilagay nyo. Because what you're doing is you're trying to market yourself more effectively to the prospective company. Now, when it comes to references, sigurado naman ako yung mga references nyo kilala nyo. Ang tanong lang dyan, kayo ba kilala nila? Kasi madalas pag tinatawagan namin yung mga references nyo, hindi kayo maalala. Yung pinakamalupit dyan, hindi talaga kayo kilala. Okay, so please advise yung mga references nyo na ginawa nyo silang reference para at least they know what to tell about you. Okay? Now at this point, I'd like to highlight yung mga things that you don't find in a traditional resume. Ano yung mga yan? Diba? Ito yung mga yun. Let me start with the portfolio section. The portfolio section is where you now upload evidence of your skills. And I think uh, with this day and age, dito pumapasok yung efficiency no, ng ating application sa mga companies. Because oftentimes, when we apply to companies, marami mga hinihingi, mga pre-employment requirements. They will ask for mga documents, mga proof that uh, is uh, showing na yun talaga yung mga skills nyo. So, kung ano man meron yung mga documents, you can now take a picture, you can scan them, and you can upload it here. Example, government IDs. Diba? Meron ka mga transcripts, academic records. Diba? You can put that. Put that there. Okay? Kung mer meron mga medical clearance na kailangan, ganun din. Hindi na kailangan magpabalik-balik sa company. Oh, ayos ba? Oh, ito pa. Diba? But wait, there's more. Ito na yun. Itong isa pang gusto ko i-recommend sa inyo, yung tinatawag natin selfie video. Nowadays, I think, it is not very difficult to create a selfie video. Diba? Ito may TikTok nga kayo eh. Diba? Alam mo naman paano gumawa ng selfie videos. I don't need to teach you how to create a selfie video. What I need to share to you na lang is yung anong kailangan sabihin pagka gumawa ka ng selfie video. Okay, this time, what I recommend is you say something interesting about yourself. Okay? So, you, you, you pretend that you're being interviewed by the HR. Diba? Ano yung mga sa atin? Why should we hire you? Diba? Tell me something about yourself. Why should we consider you among all the other applicants? Oh, di ba? Ang kagandahan ngayon is you create that video for about one minute or less. Hindi kailangan sobrang haba. No? Mga one minute lang or less. Pero ang maganda rito is na-evaluate na nung HR yung inyong communication skills. If you can speak in English, then I recommend you speak in straight English. But if you cannot, it's okay as long as you're able to show your personality. You can also showcase here yung mga hard skills nyo. Ano yung mga hard skills? Kagaya ng mga video na panood ko dati, pinakita nila how to use a soldering iron. How to properly handle a welding machine. O, diba? How to fold table napkins. O, ganun. Diba? So, depende ko ano yung mga skills na alam mo at depende ko ano yung nasa field mo rin, diba? Na napag-aralan. Diba? So, gusto mo magpakita ka kung paano mag-balance sheet, pwede rin. O, diba? Again, it really depends on what you wanted to show dun sa HR. Ang point is, you don't need to travel back and forth para lang ipakita on the spot dun sa HR yung inyong hard skills. And, most importantly, hindi na kailangan magkaroon ng maraming abiria, maraming storbo. Diba? Sometimes, when we try to contact you for the phone interview, maingay yung background, hindi marinig, diba? Mahina signal, maingay, ano ang nangyari? Uh, nas nasa biyahe, diba? Or sometimes, hindi magtugma yung schedule. At least, with that selfie video, it makes the process now more efficient. Now, another good thing pa with the resume link is that you can, you also upload here your profile picture. When it comes to profile picture, you don't need to go to the studio para magpa-picture. Huwag ka lang gumastos. Ang importante lang dyan, tumingin ka sa camera, okay, with plain background, at of course, magbihis ka naman ng maayos, di ba? And then, you're good to go. Ah, huwag mo gagawin yung mga nasa right side ng screen niyo. Those samples that I'm showing you, it, it doesn't look professional. Imagine, di ba? Yung mga selfie-selfie, yung mga nilagay ng avatar, yan, hindi yan, huwag nyo gawin yan, okay? Huwag nyo gawin yan. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, ano yan, doesn't look nice, doesn't look professional, okay? Now, another good thing pa with the resume link is that meron tayong tinatawag na cover photo. Ayan, pasintabi sa matatamaan. May iba sa inyo nakikinig ngayon, hindi naman kayo gifted with writing skills. Some of us are having a difficult time expressing our thoughts and feelings into words. So ano pwede mo gawin? You can now use those pictures to represent your personality or to showcase yung inyong skills. Example, look at the look at the one on the left, yung nasa baba. Ano kaya siya? Sabi ni iba, sir, ophthalmologist, optometrist, or eye expert. Yung nasa kanan, yung nasa taas, ano kaya siya? Sabi ni iba, sir, para siyang admin or clerical work. 
or maybe makalat kasi tingnan mo yung lamesa ang kalat-kalat. O, diba? Again, it depends on the interpretation of the person looking at it. This is an example of someone into, into HR or maybe into psychology. And this one is an example, it's a very good example by the way, of someone who wanted to say that there is no shortcut to success. Hindi po yan miyembro na akit bahay gang. Okay? Ang gusto niya sabihin, you will be able to reach uh, yung goal mo by taking one step at a time. Oh, diba? You get what I'm saying now. So I'm showing you good examples para you can draw inspiration from. And I will also show you not so good examples. Ito yung wag niyong gagayahin. Huwag kayong magpapakamisteryoso. Okay? Maglaya ka ng picture mo dyan. Lalaki man, babae in between, okay lang. Ilagay mo dyan. Member man tayo ng LGBTQ+. Okay lang. You put it there. At least alam ng HR who to expect. A lot of times, yung mga pangalan kasi very interchangeable nowadays. Ako mismo, guilty ako dyan. My name is Kim. A lot of people think, babae ako. Di ba? Eh, pag iba, nababasa kong mga resume. Ano nakalagay sa resume nila? Chris. Nakalagay George. Alex. Sam. Nick. O di ba? Joey. I would assume lalaki. Yun pala, babae. O di ba? So that's why, you better make sure you put your picture there. And wag naman pugot yung ulo nyo ha, pag nalagay kayo ng picture. Dapat kompleto. Okay? Never leave this blank because if you leave this blank, it will not catch the HR's attention. Trust me. Kung ikaw ang HR, wala ka namang ibang makita dyan, malamang mangyayari dito, next applicant na. Okay? And then if you want to catch the HR's attention, do not create something like this. This is just my opinion. I don't think this looks professional. Kasi ang dating parang tamad. Parang happy-go-lucky. No? Parang chill-chill. Walang pakialam sa buhay. Again, that is just my interpretation. Okay? So I showed you the good and not so good examples para you'll be guided. Now, you can you can just you know, play along later on kung anong sa tingin nyo mas bagay sa inyong uh, background or sa inyong... Uh, Sa, sa gusto niyo ipakita sa personality niyo. Okay? Now, let's examine a very good example. Look at this person, itong, itong eye expert. Bakit maganda itong example ng kanyang resume link? Because all the information you're seeing here, kompleto na. Diba? Hindi ka na magpabalik-balik eh. Kung ikaw yung HR, everything that you need to ask or you need you want to know about the applicant, you already find it here. If you're the HR, if you're the applicant, you might as well put everything there para wag mo na antayin pa yung time na hihingiin pa sa'yo ng HR yung mga documents yun. Baka hindi na mangyari yun. Baka may ibang aplikante na mas mas assertive, nilagay lahat ng mga information, na i-process na siya kaagad. Diba? Now, at this point, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, Sir, okay nga tong resume link, kaso lang baka naman yung information ko nakakalat na sa buong mundo, baka naman nakalantad na sa buong internet. Ang sagot ay, hindi. Kaya nga ta tinawag na the most secure tool for your job application. Diba? Bakit? Because you control your privacy settings. Ikaw, ikaw mismo, as an account user or as a resume link owner, ikaw ang may control ng privacy settings mo. And how will that happen? When you log into your dashboard, as you can see in my screen, when you log into your dashboard, you will find the resume link settings. Pagpunta mo sa settings, mapuntahan mo yung privacy settings at dun ka mamili ngayon ng information you want to show or hide in public. So let me use an example. If you don't want to show your birthday, what do you do? You turn it off. You don't want to show your references, you turn it off. You don't want to show your address, what do you do? Turn it off. Diba? So yung mga information na in-off mo, hindi lalabas sa public. Now, if ever lang, if ever lang you decide to change your mind, ang maganda dito sa resume link, updated yan, real time. As in real time. So five minutes later, you want to show your birthday, turn it on, what happens? Lahat ng mayroong alam ng resume link mo, alam na niya yung birthday mo. Diba? If, if two days later, you want to show your address, you turn it on, you save your profile, lahat ng may alam ng resume link mo, alam na rin yung inyong address. You get what I'm saying? Diba? So, depende na sa inyo kung ano gusto mo yung on or yung off. If you want to turn off everything, then okay lang. You can just turn off the button. Enable public resume link, off. Wala nang lalabas sa public. Kahit na anong information. Okay? So, yan ang re-remind ko sa inyo. This, uh, the second step, is for you to complete the information. And in doing so, please make sure that your profile is interesting, Diba? Yung information mo kompleto at updated ang details nyo para mabilis kayo makontact ng mga HR. Now, we go to the last step. Pangatlo na, last step na to. The last step is for you to submit. Now, how will you submit your resume link to those companies? You, you might be thinking, you want to uh, explore opportunities outside of the Philippines. Maybe you want to join some job fairs later on. You want to apply online. You want to, marami, walk-ins. Diba? Depende kung ano kasi bumabalik na yung face-to-face -face ngayon. So, lahat ng mga ipapakita ko sa inyo, lahat ito, practical application. Lahat yan, makaka-relate makaka kayo. Ano yung first one? The first one is you go online. Of course. Diba? Yan ang fastest way. You just connect via your phone, via kung ano man gadget mo, go to jobsonity.com, search for companies. And by the way, speaking of search, you can only search for company, tatlo lang pwede mo i-search, ha? Search for company name, position title, and location. Doon sa search bar, hindi mo pwede ma-search ang resume link. So example lang, ikaw si John Santos, okay? O kaya ikaw si, uh, ako na lang, Kim, halimbawa lang, subukan mo pumunta sa jobsonity.com, doon sa search bar, type mo doon Kim. 
Tingnan mo kung may lumabas. Malamang sa malamang, walang lalabas. Unless, unless, ha, may company name, position title, or location na may word na Kim. Other than that, walang lalabas dyan. Kasi hindi siya searchable. So, the only time a company would be able to know your information is if and when you give your exact resume link to that company. So, ikaw may control. Ayos? Uh, so, tuloy natin. Okay, tuloy natin. So, if you're going to search for companies, what do you do? Just go to the website of jobsonid.com, search for companies. Kung may lumabas, edi eh, meron. Pag walang lumabas, edi eh, wala. Diba? Ganun lang yan. Huwag atin pilitin magkaroon ng something kung wala talaga. Diba? Okay. So, ano gagawin? Uh, tingnan mo yung mga companies. Kung meron kang type, edi eh, gawin nyo. Check nyo yung opportunities. After that, you now submit your information to that company. Okay, when, and when you submit your information to the company, it will ask for your uh, profile. Ah, for sorry, for your uh, resume link and password. So, ikaw lang bibigay na consent dun sa company. Okay. Now, another option is for you to send resumes via email. Now, there's nothing wrong in sending resumes through email. Ang tanong dito is how are you sending your resumes through email? Do you do it like this? Do you say, dear HR manager, I'd like to apply for the following position. This is my resume. Tapos mag attach ka ng Word file, PDF file, or whatever file you have. If you're doing those attachments pa, ang tawag dyan, traditional, pampabagal, makaluma. Hindi ko sinabing mali. Ang sabi ko lang, traditional, pampabagal, makaluma. Bakit? Hindi mo kala mag-attach anything anymore. If you're going to write an email and, and, and send your resume, just simply type your resume link there. Dear HR manager, I would like to apply for the following position. This is my resume. In this example, Antonio Juan de la Cruz, thejobsonity.com, send. Tapos na. Ganun lang kabilis. Diba? Whatever changes you need to do, you put it inside your resume link. You don't have to keep on sending another attachment. Eh, paano kung nagkaroon? Eh, imagine mo na lang, nag-attach ka ng Word file. Diba? Ng PDF file. Eh, tapos nagpalit ka ng address, nagpalit ka ng phone number. Ano gagawin mo? Email mo na naman HR. Dear HR manager, I'm sending you my updated resume. Ganun ba? Eh, paano kung two months later, naglumipit ka ng bahay, iba na address mo? Send ka ulit ng bagong resume. Dear HR manager, I'm sending you my updated, most recent resume. I don't think you'll do that. Kasi kung ganun ang ginagawa mo, sayang sa oras na nakapagod sa'yo sa part, no? lalong-lalo naman sa part ng HR, mas nakapagod to keep track kung saan dyan yung pinaka-updated na attachment or pinaka-updated na resume ng aplikante. And this time around, if you have your resume link, all you need to do is just update your resume link at lahat na may alam ng resume link mo, makikita nila yung pinaka real-time update ng profile or information. Ayos ba? Ayos ba? O sige, another one. For those who wanted to use a hard copy, gusto mo talaga may hard copy ka when you apply to those companies, you want to give something, then this is also possible. What do you do? You go to your dashboard inside your job seeker account, then you can print your resume link. Mamili ka lang. One column or two column version. Either way, the system will try to compress everything into one page. O ba? Diba? Maginhawa sa buhay. So kung gusto mo talaga mag-apply sa mga kumpanya, hindi mo na kailangan mag, mag, mag-prepare ng maraming mga pages. I Minsan, mean, di ba, yung mga aplikante, mga 2-3 pages ang isang set ng resume. Palibasa, yung font size, size 45. Kaya umaabot ng 2-3 pages. O ba? Diba? Pero this time, the system will try to compress everything na into one page. Just in case you really want to have a hard copy. O ba? Diba? Tipid. Tipid. Okay? Another thing pa for me to encourage you to do is you use resume link cards. Resume link cards. Ano tong resume link card? Kung sa mga nagtatrabaho na, ang tawag namin business card. Sa mga nag apply tawag dyan, resume link card. So in one piece of paper, whether short bond or long bond paper, you can now design it your own way. You can design it, depende kung ano ang gusto mo, pagiging creativity mo. Ikaw bahala. You can make 10, 20 sets of cards. Depende sa laki o liit. Diba? Kasi laki ng index card or kasi liit lang naman normal business cards natin. Diba? So depende. So maybe in one long bond paper, you can make 10, 20 sets of cards na. And so after you have it printed out, pwede ka na ngayon mag-gupit-gupit. Gupit-gupit na lang. Diba? Sampo or bente, bawat kumpanya, you can now start to give that as a hard copy. Hard copy pa rin naman yan eh. But this time, why am I encouraging you to use resume link cards instead of the traditional long bond or short bond paper? Bakit? Una-una, tipid. Diba? Because of course, right now, eto, tipid. Kasi if you're going to apply to 20 companies, you don't need to print 20 sets of long bond papers. You just need to print one long bond paper and cut 20 small pieces of resume link cards. O, diba? That's for the cost side. Tipid na. Pangalawa, at mas importante, security of information. Diba? You want to have peace of mind. Paano ko nasabi yan? Kapag ikaw yung nagbigay sa isang kompanya ng long bond paper or short bond paper, example lang, no? it's a traditional uh, resume, 
And for some reason, nilipad ng hangin. Okay? Nilipad ng hangin. Hindi mo kasalanan. Kasalanan ng hangin eh. Diba? May nakapulot na stranger. May nakapulot na stranger. All your information, alam na nung stranger. Tama? And you cannot deny it because you know what I'm saying is true. Diba? Hindi mo kilala pero alam niya yung details mo. Now, using your resume link card, same scenario. Nagbigay ka ng resume link card sa company, nilipad ng hangin ngayon. May na stranger na nakapulot, okay lang. Bakit? Kampante ka. Kasi yung resume link, ikaw may control ng privacy settings mo. That's why, in your resume link card, what I recommend, you just simply put your name and your resume link. Dalawa lang. That's it. If you want to put your mobile number, it's okay. It's up to you. You can put it there. Diba? Pero ang point ko is, resume link, pwede na siya makita ng mga HR or mga companies na bibigyan mo. Diba? So you have peace of mind now. Okay? So there's a lot of advantages using resume links. In fact, doon pa lang sa privacy portion, panalong-panalo ka na. Ikaw ang may control ng privacy settings mo real time. Pagdating sa speed of hire, it becomes faster and more efficient because whatever you want to show the HR, you just attach it there. Whatever the HR needs from you, they just ask from you. Diba? You take a picture, you scan them, upload it there, and later on, pag okay na, you now turn off yung privacy settings mo. Diba? Or you can remove them in the attachments. Diba? Cost efficient, definitely wala tong gastos, tipid. Diba? If you're thinking, ay sir, paano po yung internet? Kailangan ko ng pang load. Pwede ka maging resourceful. Connect lang tayo sa mga libreng wifi. O, diba? And then, pagdating sa flexibility, if you really want to have it printed out, yung inyong resume, you also have the option to print it out. Just like how I showed it to you, one column or two column version. Either way, it's really up to you. Pero ang point ko is, resume link na lahat yan. Okay? And you can use this to any platform, whatever platform you want to share it to. You want to share it sa mga messenger nyo, you want to share it sa email, sa Viber, sa text, di ba? Gusto mo, kaya ko bahala. Di ba? Gusto mo sulat mo sa papel, tapos gawa ka ng airplane, palipad mo, di ba? May nakakuha, alam niya yung resume link mo. Ikaw bahala, okay? Ikaw may control kung sino ang gusto mo bigyan. Okay? You don't have to use your USBs anymore. You don't have to save it sa hard drive. Baka mawala pa yung USB nyo, delikado. Diba? Wag na. Baka ano pa makita ng mga nakakapulot ng mga USB na yan. Okay? So you don't need to worry about compatibility as well because this is compatible to any platform. If you're using Android, you're using Safari, kung ano magamit mo, pwede yan sa kahit anong version. Okay? And so, uh, just to promote lang, uh, if you want to be part of our team, we're also hiring. Mismo sa jobs180.com, we're hiring for several uh, opportunities, several vacancies yan. Check out na lang yung aming jobs180.com slash jobs180 na page. Okay? And by the grace of God, shout out lang ako, right now we have more than 400 plus colleges and university partners nationwide from north all the way to the south of the Philippines. Thank you, Lord. O, diba? Ang kinalat namin, hindi lang virus. <laughs> Biro lang. Kinalat namin, resume link. Yan ang kinalat natin. So, a lot of schools now, including your alma mater, are now using the resume link. So, I hope it doesn't stop here. No? You become a blessing to others as well. If you have friends, you have yung mga relatives mo, nasa tingin mo kailangan itong tool na ito, you can share it to them. Wala namang bayad eh. Libre naman yan. Okay? And so, as we uh, close uh, this, this portion, uh, I'd like to discuss some of the frequently asked questions. Baka ito yung mga agam, agam nyo or ito yung mga questions na gusto nyo tanungin. Sagutin ko na muna. Okay? Unang tanong, can I give my resume links to companies who do not know about jobs180.com? The answer is absolutely yes. Basta alam nila eksaktong link mo at ikaw may control sino bibigyan mo nun. Ikaw lang ang mag magbibigay. Diba? So ikaw lang may alam sino binigyan mo. Okay? Now, second question. Is it the same as other job platform, kagaya ng JobStreet, LinkedIn, or any other job site? The answer is no. May dalawang pagkakaiba. And let me use an example here. It's, let me do a shout out to JobStreet no? because I think you guys know what JobStreet is. So shout out lang to them sa mga nasa JobStreet. If you're using JobStreet na resume, you can only apply to companies who are using JobStreet. If you're applying to a company who is not using JobStreet, you cannot use your JobStreet resume anymore. Pero pag gamit mo yung resume link mo, pwede mo yung gamitin kahit na saan, kahit na kanino, kahit na anong platform. Diba? Basta alam no HR yung eksaktong link mo at ikaw magbibigay nun. That's the first difference. Second difference, if you have already submitted your job street resume to an HR, you cannot change anything anymore. Well, you can on your end, but it will not be reflected on the HR. Hindi siya magiging real-time update. Comparing it to resume link ni Jobs180, you can update it real time. Two days later, five minutes later, six weeks later, ikaw bahala, anytime nag-update ka ng information, lahat na in-update mo, dagdag bawas, will be reflected real time across all na may alam ng resume link mo. Okay? So those are the two major differences. Now, pagdating sa pangatlong question, yan ang pinaka-simpleng tanong. Can I keep my information secured? 
I hope by this time na convince ko na kayo na ito na ang pinaka secured na job application platform. Okay? So use your resume link. Number four question I think is the most important question. How often should you update your resume link? The answer is every time. Every time na meron kang babaguhin. Okay? Every time na meron kang babaguhin. Lalong-lalo na yung contact details mo. Kasi imagine, binago mo lahat. Binago mo yung work experience mo, nagkaroon ka ng awards, nagkaroon ng achievement. Hindi ka naman makontact ng HR. Wala rin, di ba? Sayang din. That's why you have to update yung contact details nyo. Okay? And the last question is just a trivia. Uh, trivia lang. Palaisipan. Why is this called jobs180.com? This is called jobs180.com because we want to turn your life around. 100 80 degrees. And in case you're wondering, no, you you, you wanted to, to to raise a concern. Bakit hindi po 360? Kasi pag 360 degrees, you only go back to where you started. Ikot ka lang na ikot, ikot ka lang na ikot, wala kang pupuntahan. Diba? Bumabalik ka lang kung saan ka galing. O ha? O diba? Char-char lang yan. Okay? So, anyways, again, kung meron pa kayo questions, just in case you have questions, Okay, you may uh, send those questions here uh, through our website, www.jobsonity.com. You can also email us or email me here sa info at jobsonity.com. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, pati na rin sa TikTok. Okay, so check us out on all our social media platform. Okay, again, my name is Kim Chu. Wa? Don't forget the wa. Okay, isang magandang araw po sa inyo lahat. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sir Kim. So to our audience, the floor is now open for questions. So please put your questions in the comment section so we can ask those questions to Sir Kim. So I'll go first para makapag-isip kayo ng question niyo. So first, a question, Sir. Is it okay to apply to jobs not directly related to your course? Um, Definitely, yes. Uh, it's, it's okay to apply to any course. Uh, sorry, to any job. Even if they're not connected to your course, for as long as one, you do your research, uh, make sure that you learn about the requirements and the responsibilities that you're uh, you're entering, the budget they're exploring. And if uh, you have the skill sets for that, then I do recommend you explore, you, you check it out. You submit your resume link. So yes, to answer your question, you may apply. Okay? Pwede. Okay, thank you for that, sir. Ito, sir, yung next question ko. Um, is it okay to um, look for employment while you're waiting for the um, board exam or while you're doing mm. your Ganyan po. Because I saw yeah. in the in the audience, there are a lot of um, people from engineering, very mm. transportation, na Correct. possible meron pong licensing exam. Uh -oh. Sige, let, let me... So, halimbawa, you're... Uh... You, you 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 take up uh, engineering so and you want to apply for a graphic designer position ayan, or for a, say an IT programming position sometimes you might be thinking walang connect sa course mo yun kasi engineer ka pero if you have the skills example mahilig ka naman sa sa programming or sa gra uh, graphic design diba? then yes you can explore no kino connect ko lang dun sa una because you mentioned that these are our audience for this uh this morning session now to answer your second question uh Hmm. Pangalawang tanong ni Ma'am Shari doon sa Is it advisable? Teka, sige. Ano yung gusto mo ulit ma-emphasize ko doon? Para para gagawa ko example pa. Sige. Paki paki run through ulit yung second question mo. Ha, isip pa ko na example. Kunyari sir, engineer ka. Engineer. Hmm. Um, Waiting for the board, di ba? Oh, oh. Ewan ko. Pwede mag-apply. Ayan. Or yeah, Aero. Sige, sige. Alam ko mayroong mga licensing exams yan eh. Oo. Uh -uh. so, okay. Uh, Pwede, advisable bang maghanap ka ng trabaho okay. habang nagaantay ka for the Okay, board gets ko na. Sige, yan, yan, yan. Iko-connect ko sa actual example. No? So, uh, you still have a few more months. Example, maybe three months or six months because you need to review uh, to take up your board exam. And uh, from that point, bakante ang oras mo, marami kang oras para mag-aral, para mag-review, pero at the same time, marami ring oras para mag-explore ng possible career opportunities. Diba? So, ang question dito is, is it okay to start applying or to even take a job while you are reviewing or while you're waiting for the results of your board exam? For me, okay lang. Walang bawal. You uh, inform the HR when you're applying and you tell them you set expectations. Yan ang pinaka-importante. You set expectations. You tell them that you are uh, waiting for the schedule of your board exam or you're waiting if papasa ka o hindi. Example lang, no? Kasi nakapag-take ka na na exam. Uh, I think that's a, a good way to start with that company and also a good way for you to start your career. 
'di ba? Huwag mo na antayin kung kaya naman, kung kaya naman then huwag mo na antayin yung time na uh, magtapos na yung yung exam mo tsaka ka mag-explore because you're thinking oh by the time license engineer na ako tsaka ako mag apply 'di ba? So Pwede rin naman, no? Uh, you, you, you take it at your own pace. Wala naman bawal. Eh. You want to, even if pasado ka na sa board exam, ko ayaw mo magtrabaho, pwede rin naman, di ba? So, kung baga, uh, just to answer the question lang, kung pwede mag-apply while you're waiting, yes. While you're reviewing, yes. Di ba? And even if you're applying for a position, ikokonek ko lang ulit sa first question ni Ma'am Shari. Even if you're applying for a position na walang connect dun sa, sa course mo, while you're waiting for that uh Uh, board exam, then yes, by all means, pwede. Basta uh, alam mo at na-research ka dun sa papasukan mo. Wa- iwasan nyo yung ugali ng, alam mo yung mga karamihan na aplikante na hindi na nagtumitingin ng mga details, basta na lang submit na submit. So they just consider this as a, as a numbers game. Well, yes, it is a numbers game because the more companies you apply to, the more chances of of winning. Diba? The more chances of you getting, uh, landing a job. However, Uh, if you apply to so many companies and and, uh, and they started to reach out to you pabalik, baka happy problem ang mangyari sa'yo, di ba? Uh, you don't know which one to prioritize na. Diba? And sometimes if you apply to so many companies that you even miss out yung mga details na kailangan mong alamin about the company and they ask you a simple question, what do you know about the company or why did you apply for the specific position? At hindi mo masagot, sayang na may oras mo tsaka sayang opportunity. Okay, so yun lang yung point ko dito. Don't don't waste your time. No, uh, if you want to start applying, exploring while you're waiting for your board exam, go ahead by by any means. Go lang. Okay? Ayan. So thank you for that, sir. So those are the reminders for our graduating batch of 2023. Yes, may naka-scroll din na link so they can also check that out. Kung nakikita nyo, nakalagay dyan, schools.jobs180.com slash fiati. Diba? Puntahan nyo po yung link na yan. You can see a lot of internship, OJT opportunities, as well as fresh graduate opportunities that you can explore. Okay, again, regardless kung connected sa course or hindi, basta gusto mo yung company, gusto mo yung trabaho, alamin nyo kung ano yon. I recommend you start exploring and submit your resume link to them. Okay? And also, by the way, promote na rin ako since trabaho pinag-usapan. Jobs180.com, <clears throat> kami mismo, internal, internal ito, no? vacancy for the company, Uh, we have a lot of uh, positions right now. And one of the things that we're looking for is for business development. So we're expanding our team. If you're interested or if you know anyone, you have friends or relatives that you'd like to refer them to us, just tell them to go check out lang yung link. Ulitin ko lang, schools.jobs180.com slash fiati. Or you can check out our website, jobs180.com. Diba? Pumunta ka na lang mismo sa uh, career site ni Jobs180, jobs180.com slash jobs180. And the last one is kung gusto nyo uh, email, email, pwede rin. Email as your resume link sa info, that's I-N-F-O, info at jobs180.com. Okay? So All right. Thank you for that, sir. Um, sir, um, the Grad Prep Committee prepared a certificate for you. So this certificate of appreciation, um, the FEATI University Graduating Students Preparation Program in coordination with the Students Assistance Services Office presents this certificate of appreciation to Sir Kim Chua for his invaluable time and expertise as guest speaker of on 2023 Graduating Students Preparation Program held on the 15th of March 2023 at Fiat University Santa Cruz, Manila, signed by Ms. Mary Grace Chua, OIC, for the Student Services Office, and Engineer Virgilio Zacarias Jr., Director, 2023 Grad Prep Committee, Acting Chairperson, EECE Department. Wow. So thank, thank you. you so- thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, I saw in the video earlier, ang haba na ng partnership natin. No, we started I think 2014 pa, so it's almost a decade now, and uh, we still have the the very big uh, heavy uh, trophy. <laughs> trophy ba tawag doon? Na nakadisplay sa office namin. That was a uh, uh, as one of the most outstanding parang uh, partner, no, company partner of of Fiati way back uh, pre-pandemic days. Okay, right? so thank you, thank you again to people thank behind you, uh, this event. Salamat thank po. Thank you, thank you. Ayan. 
So just announcement, guys. So um, selfie time. So for documentation of the grads prep committee, kindly send your selfies watching the webinar to Chua at featiu.edu.ph. So this is Miss Grace uh, Chua's email address. So um, malay nyo, in the next video, kayo naman yung ma-feature. Yeah, so doc for documentation lang yan. Please be reminded that the attendance and evaluation will be released at the end of this webinar pa. Ayan. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Ayan. So next speaker. Next speaker, we have new year of work adapting to the now no to the new normal. So this will be presented by Mr. Robert Chua Panglinan, General Manager, Managing Director of Acts at CNI, yeah? So, Mr. Robert Pangilinan is currently the General Manager of Acts at, at CNI, yeah? Incorporated, a review and tutorial center in San Juan. He graduated with honors from Ateneo de Manila University, earning a Bachelor's of Science degree in Management Engineering and some units for a master degree master's degree in teaching mathematics. He was a former lecturer at Endron Colleges and at the Manila University. In 2000, he started ACT Acts in Manila and soon expanded its services to San Juan. In the first two years of COVID-19 pandemic, Mr. Pangalinan has led the adjustment process of Acts at Cientaya in order to adapt to the new setup and to make sure that all Acts employee are equipped with ad adequate skills for the needs of the new normal. So let's welcome to the floor, Sir Robert Chua Pangalina. Hi, yes, Sir. Good morning. Robert, good morning. Yes, good morning, I'm sorry. <laughs> so your deck is up, po. so I leave it to it. You have 20 minutes for your presentation, and I'll be back for the question and answer. So, sure, Sir sure, Robert, sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, so good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Robert Pangilinan. I'm here to discuss about adapting to the new normal environment. No? Uh, as we have experienced for the past few years, um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have, we have made a lot of adjustments changes no because of lockdown because of the scare uh being scared of the virus and all so there are a lot of adjustments especially in the working environment now i'm sure for the students here um you also experienced that in school right you have you're, you were forced to study online or maybe do something else na not face to face no so a lot of adjustments so right now the same thing when you go to work actually no? so yun, let's start here okay so what is the new normal ba? Okay, so let's start understanding the new normal by knowing what is the old normal. The old normal in terms of work uh, is actually pure on-site work. So this is where you see everyone inside the office. And then uh, when, you, when you will do any meeting, so lahat yun, nasa harapan natin, tas meet tayo, tas magkukuntuhan, etc. etc. No? So that was the old normal. No? So parang... Medyo pre-pandemic, everyone is actually in that particular setup that no one probably can imagine that people can actually work from home. No? But because of the pandemic, we, we were forced to make the adjustments. No? Same thing with, with in, in Acts, we also do that. No? We, um, so what is now the new normal? Let's start with the work setup. The work setup, we have either normally nowadays is either remote or hybrid. Even, even with the more or less the endemic right now no but co uh, companies are still um using the remote or hybrid setup no for what reason for for many reasons like for example financial reasons uh, mas nakakatipid sila in terms of uh, rent in terms of the operating expenses because the people are basically working from home no so that's one and also they see the advantages as well because of like you know Le uh, lesser transportation uh, cost and at the same time the travel time no so they they're lessened as well so they feel that sometimes it's actually make the employee to be more efficient to be more effective so it really depends on the company that that you want to apply in the future so some of them are really still remote like maybe twice a month they only meet twice a month they would ask to report to the office no? that way or some of them are actually in hybrid like maybe more often like maybe thrice a week or so no? so it really depends on the setup but that's more or less the general setup 
of the companies nowadays. So, tayo, being student, ganun din mangyari mong adjustments. Kung sa school kayo, eh, ganun din yung parang medyo nasa hybrid mode. Right now, when you go to the work, uh, when you go to work, ganun din yung more or less a setup, at least for the first few years probably. Okay? Now, Another uh, situation is that has changed is that the performance base. No? So instead of before that, oh, time in, time out. So doon tayo naka-base. No? So kung ano ang time in, oh, trabaho, trabaho, trabaho. And then afterwards, we time out, okay, we're off, off we go. No? But nowadays, because of the remote work setup or the hybrid setup, so we're forced to work from home, it's hard for them to really do the log in and log out. No? So more on performance base or output base. So, so sabihin na, oh, ito yung mga dapat natin tapusin within the day. So ito yung dapat mong requirement. So if that means that you need to work overtime, then you need to work overtime. Pero walang dagdag. <laughs> so depende then sa arrangement with the company na yun. So it's really performance based na um, more, more often dahil ang pagdating sa work from home setup. Now, another with regards to communication. Nowadays, it's more on virtual communication. Because of the setup, of course, pano sa bahay, pano kayo naman mag-uusap? Siyempre, virtual. No? So, online meetings compared to the face-to-face -face meetings. But of course, when they have the opportunity to meet face-to-face, -face, no, definitely, they'll do the face-to-face -face meetings. But on a normal day, they will do the online meetings via the different possible uh, platforms. No? So, yun yung mga options. Now, so because of the new normal, so maraming adjustments, no? And I'm sure the students here also have the sentiment na ang hirap, di ba? Minsan mga ganun, no? So, ano yung mga challenges that we are facing with regards to the new normal? Okay. First, the challenge of the new normal is that working at home, okay, it means that working with more technical problems, no? Working with more technical problems. Ano ibig sabihin yan, no? Um, before, lahat ng mga equipment natin provided by the company. So, papasok ka, nandun yung desktop mo sa computer, sa office, and then you just work there. Okay? But nowadays, because you have to, or you were forced to work from home, so it's either you have your own desktop or you have your own laptop, and that's where you work. And pag may problem ka, nowadays, since you're at home, sino tatawagin mo? Wala naman dyan yung IT ninyo to help you to fix your computer. No? Since na bahay, nasa bahay tayo. No? So, yun yung mga difficulty na part, no? And at the same time, ang normal problem pa is with regards to the online, to being going online. So, nakaka-problem na, oy, bakit biglang nalag ako? Or bakit biglang na-disconnect ako? No? So, that is the normal concern of the employees. So, sabi nila, ay, baka Wi-Fi problem, Wi-Fi problem. Yung pala, hindi nila alam. Yung router lang nila needs to be reset. On, uh, off mo lang muna, muna for 10 seconds and then you turn it on again then that solves the problem. Because maybe because they're not aware of those uh, technical knowledge. So it depends the situation. No? And sometimes maybe it's better that they use wired connection as compared to wireless connection. No? So yung mga ganun bagay, so sometimes they have a difficulty on handling the situation. So this is one of the challenges. I'm sure even the students here, that's also your challenge. No? Now, Aside from that, ano pang mga pinaka-problema natin? No? Eto. That when you say working from working at home, that also means that you're working in an uncontrollable environment. No? So, ano ba uncontrollable? Remember, you can only control what you can do no? or what, what is within you. Anything outside of you is uncontrollable. Kung meron bang, for example, na... Um, Sabihin natin na, uh, uh, wait lang. Ito. Okay. Kung biglang, meron bang, uh, habang nagsasalita ako, sobrang excited na, biglang, may tumahol. <laughs> right? So, wala tayong control sa, sa ganung situation. Right? So, may hirapan na tayo kagad with regards to that. Eh, just biglang, ganun naman. And then, excited, excited, biglang, those are the things that are controllable. Okay pa tayo dyan. No? This, this are, Quite minor. Eh, paano pag meron dyan mga nag, biglang umiyak na bata, biglang nag-away, or biglang dumaan sa likod natin, again, that's why actually um, um, mostly nowadays, no, when people are meeting virtually online, 
No? So they actually turn off their cameras. Even the students, I'm sure, you're, you normally turn off your cameras because of the of the of the background that uh, means may dadaan, means ganito, ganito, na not suitable to be seen by others no so yun yung mga bagay na medyo mahirap no so saka hindi lang okay pa yan no mga ganyan mga environment but sometimes is that it distracts you in terms of working hindi ka maka-concentrate no instead of na sa office tayo in an environment na okay wala kang kausap kanya-kanyang trabaho ngayon nandiyo ka nang sa harapan mo you want to work ayos just biglang guguluhin ka ng kapatid mo, biglang may kailangan si nanay, biglang may kailangan si tatay, mga ganun. So, ang hirap, no? So, those are the challenges talaga. No? May hirap, may hirap talaga. But, kaya naman niya masolve, no? Yun. Okay, hey, sorry. Let's go back lang muna. Okay. So, um, here. So, Another challenge is that working at home no, means that working with no physical monitoring. So, may hindi say, pag nasa office tayo, trabaho tayo sa harapan ng computer, we are conscious that there are office mates and there's also your, your, your immediate head or supervisor in front of you. Diba? Parang ganun. Not necessarily in front of you, but they can see what you're doing. No? So, somewhat leads you to okay na okay mas concentrate ako magtatrabaho ako parang ganyan pero pag nasa bahay na tayo wala namang nakakakita from the office so it tends to have more difficulty baka mo may konti ay imbis na magtatrabaho ay order muna ako ng milk tea pampagising after na duminom ng milk tea ay, kaya naman tayo hindi pa rin ako magising or whatsoever para ano mga ganun no? so medyo mas mahirap minsan pwede naman makatulog na lang tayo hindi natin napansin no so, those are the factors na medyo mahirap talaga pag nasa uh, bahay tayo nito trabaho. So, these are the challenges of the new normal. Okay. Now, with these challenges, how do we try to face these challenges? No? Okay. So, I have here four keys to adopt to the new normal. And it's very easy to remember. All you need to remember is acts. So you just remember X and then you'll be fine. Okay. So A stands for accept. C stands for connect. T stands for thirst. And S stands for self-control. Okay. So ano ba mga to? Let's go to them one by one. No? So first, when you say accept, no? that we have to accept that the new normal is here to stay. No? Kailangan natin muna tanggapin na, okay, this is what's gonna be my work environment at least for the next few years. Okay? Only by then, that's a time that, okay, so kung ganito na nga, paano ko to i-improve? Paano ko to aayusin? No? Remember, acceptance is the first step to adaptation. No? So without acceptance, hindi tayo makaka-adapt kasi we will always just be, what? Complain and complain. Ayoko ng ganito, hindi ako makatrabaho, nakakatulog lang ako. Ah, ganyan. So, we have to be able to accept that. Parang kung bibigyan tayo ng konting analogy dyan, parang ganito lang yan. No? Sabi natin, bagong kasal. Masayang masaya tayo. Pagdating ng gabi, okay, matutulog na. So, I'm so happy. Nagyakapan pa. Pagkatapos ng yakapan, nakatulog na. Tapos biglang, may nah nakilig tayo na, ah, huminik na yung katabi natin. <laughs> Ngayon, pwede pa pa natin yan isole? Hindi na pwede. No? So, kailangan natin itanggap or kailangan natin ng accept na siya ang katabi natin for the rest of our lives. No? So, ganun lang. So, kailangan na muna tanggapin para natin, paano natin haharapin. Lagyan lang, kailangan ba natin lagyan ng earplug or ano man kailangan natin gawin para makatulong doon. Okay? So, kailangan natin muna ma-accept. So, actually, in Acts, that's also what we did. That okay, at, at the start of the pandemic, we accepted that, okay, this has to be the change that we have to do. So, we gave, we, we let the employees to really work from home, and then we provided them with the equipment. No? Yung sa mga iba na walang computer sa bahay, so, pinadala namin yung mga computer sa office, doon muna sila magtrabaho. So, and then provide them yung mga possible na mga headset na kailangan kasi syempre before, hindi naman kailangan, di ba? Before the pandemic. So yung mga ganun. So we also made that adjustments. No? So now, another thing is that 
we have to focus on what you can control. Remember, kung may nag-aaway dyan, kung meron dyan uh, umiiyak, kung merong tumatahol ng aso, those are factors that we are uh, that we can control. So we have to be able to accept that this is my new normal. This is my new working environment. And with that acceptance, okay, how do I adjust? How can I adjust in the best way? So maybe, for example, hahanap ko ng pwesto mo dun sa bahay kung saan ka makakatrabaho. Okay? For example, you can, kung masyadong magulo nga dyan, edi humarap tayo sa wall. No? Doon tayo humarap para wala ka masyadong nakikita. At siguro naman, pag humarap ka na sa wall, mas alam na ng mga paligid natin ng mga tao na ay, magkatrabaho siya. Huwag natin mo na siyang kuloy. Hopefully, ganun naman. But again, those are uncontrollable factors. Yeah? So, kailangan mga ganun lang. And then, another thing also is that, okay, baka may mga paraan na para maiwasan natin na mas madistract. For example, maingay yung paligid natin. So, maybe this is where you upgrade your equipment if necessary. So, maybe you try to find headset na medyo noise cancelling Okay? So parang yung narinig natin, halos sarili lang natin, so pwede ka mag-play ng music, and then habang nagtatrabaho. So at least, by, that, by then, hindi ka masyado affected by what you hear. And what you see is already just in front of you, which is the computer and the wall. So what you hear and what you see is somewhat lessened na yung mga uncontrollable factors. Okay? So ganun naman. So maraming mga paraan. So you just have to customize it to whatever that helped help you, okay? So that is the first tip, which is to accept, okay? Next, connect, okay? The tendency of working from home is that parang nagiging, nagiging, ano, nagiging long distance relationship tayo sa mga co-workers natin. Minsan, pag nakita-kita na ulit, ay, di ko alam kung siya pa rin yan o hindi na. No? Parang mga... Boyfriend, girlfriend, ganun din, di ba? Pagka medyo long distance, pag nakita na ulit, hindi mo alam kung ay, siya pa nga ba o hindi na. So, yung mga ganyan. So, that's why it's very important that we regularly check. We regularly stay connected with our co-workers. So, regularly check on the well-being of your co-workers. Minsan, imbis na sa trabaho ay puro trabaho, trabaho lang. No? Um, kailangan din tayo magkamustahan din. This is what, uh, what, 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 what my wife, who is actually uh, also the president of of Ax Aching Aya, no, um, uh, T, uh, Tina, who who is watching right now, she always mentions that kailangan natin to check on each other. So kailangan para ting magkamustahan. That's why one of the activities inside Ax is that we have a regular Monday kamustahan session. So mga online meetings, na magkikinta, oh, kamusta na? Kahit na for the five. 10 minutes lang na, oh, okay ka ba ba? O may nangyari ba sa'yo? Et cetera, et cetera. So this is also just to help the, the well-being of the, the co-workers. At the same time, mas hindi kayo masyadong feeling na distant no, kahit na pa no? So that will actually help. So if the company is not providing that kind of uh, the situation, then you do it by yourself. No? So mag-message ka na lang, mag-fiber ka na lang, or mag-messenger ka na lang, mga ganun. No? Now, second, Never assume. No? Never assume. Always ask. No? So, the tendency kasi when you say working distantly, no? so, nangyayari is, minsan, hindi na natin nakakausap yung tao on a, on a regular basis. So, hindi natin alam kung ano yung iisipin natin, kung ano yung iisip ng tao niyo. So, sometimes, we tend to have assumptions. Ay, baka ganito siya. Ay, baka ayaw niya kung pagkahinga ako ng tulong sa kanya. So, never assume. Always ask pa rin tayo. No? Because, you know, space and time can actually make people to feel distant to each other. Medyo parang fine. Hindi nila alam kung ano nagagawin. Ito yung mga scenario na example, no? Doon sa mga nakaka-relate, for example, sa mga magulang, no? Pagka yung magulang, the whole time na nandiyan yung mga anak nila, no? yung bata pa lang, hanggang lumaki na na hanggang maging teenager. So, all the time, kasama na yung mga bata. All the time, iniisip na yung mga bata, no? Pagdating ng mga teenager na yung mga bata, which is dila sila bata, so they are now left alone sa bahay parati na silang dalawa na lang, tapos parang ngayon, ay, wala na yung mga, wala na kami kailangan isipin tungkol sa mga bata. So kailangan namin tung isipin na tungkol sa isa't isa. Anong na nga pang gusto niya? Naalala ko pa ba? Mga ganon. 
Minsan, hindi ka na sanay na kayong dalawa na lang. Gusto mo parati meron pa rin kasama. No? So, those are the situations because medyo na-disconnect na kayo. So, that, that this is the opportunity where you start connecting again. So, if ever nagkaroon ng ganun na gap, no? exert effort to connect with each other. No? Ganun lang kaila. Now, third here, make an effort outside the office. So, kung for example, ay talagang remote work tayo most of the time, no? then what you do, is that you schedule meetups, face-to-face meetups with co-workers. No? Para lang totoong kwentuhan, totoong mag- 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 magkita-kita talaga. Iba pa rin kasi talaga pag face-to-face. No? Uh, I'm sure for the students here, you can relate. No? Iba yung pag-online meeting, online class, ang hirap, di ba? Hindi nyo makausap yung mga classmates natin. No? So iba pa rin yung pag nakita-kita na kayo, yun, mas masaya pa rin talaga. Okay? So stay connected. Connect. Next, thirst. Have the thirst to learn skills needed in the new normal. Because of the new normal, we have a lot of new skills that are needed. And we have to have that thirst. Yung gusto, yung gusto kumbaga. No? Gusto natin matuto. No? Para makapag-adapt tayo sa new normal. So we have to learn skills for the new normal. And of course, what kind of skills? Of course, everything is related to the computer. Okay. Everything related to online. No? So, for example, as simple as, murunong ba tayo kumamit talaga ng Zoom? For example, that's one of the common uh, platform for uh, online meetings. No? So, alam na ba natin yung mga different uh, how to set up a meeting, how to schedule meetings, and how to make adjustments kung ano mga, mga sa mga sounds natin, sa mga vir- uh, virtual background natin, etc. Are we aware on how to handle them? No? So, these are like some of the basic. Minsan nowadays, yung mga, of course, more often pa yung mga, uh, mga, mga Word, mga Excel, or maybe even the mga Google Sheets, Google Documents. So, all this technology, no, kailangan natin matutunan ng mas malalim. Kung dati kasi, manual sulat pa lang, okay na. E ngayon, hindi pwede. E ngayon, pagkakuusap yun, lahat online. Okay. Even email, how do you handle the email? No? You know, how do you write the signature? Mga so, maraming mga bagay na kailangan natin matutunan. No? So, we need to learn a lot of skills. And because of that, we have to be willing to learn beyond working hours if needed. No? Hindi tayo pwede na, uh, during working hours, tayo magtatrabaho, beyond working hours, hindi na kailangan. Remember, what you're doing right now is not just for the company, but also for you because remember that you are competing against people in the in the in the in the whole wide world no? so marami kayong kalaban ngayon so the one who is more skilled will be the one who is more competent so siya yung mas hahanapin no? so kaya important important na kailangan natin ay willing to learn at para mas matutunan tayo ng maraming skills and then yun nga katulad sinabi ni kanina ni Sir Kim no? na add natin lahat ng mga, sk- mga skills natin dun sa resume natin no? para madagdagan natin na oy nakita ng, ng, ng HR meron siyang ganitong skill bonus points to pogi points yan parang ganun no? and nowadays marami naman dyan free resources YouTube pa lang Lahat ng pwede mong matutunan, doon pwede na. Di ba? Or mag-Google ka lang, marami ng pwede malaman. No? And of course, if hindi mo pa rin maintindihan yung mga yun by yourself, then ask a friend who is just a video call away. Di ba? Hindi ka tulad yung mga old panahon, eh, wala talagang matutunan. Kunang pa talagang makita yung mga tao para matutunan. Ay, paano ko gagawin ito? Kung wait, makita mo na tayo. Ngayon, kahit hindi ka makita, oh, share screen na lang ako. Makikita na natin kung paano gawin. Right? So there are a lot of things that we have to learn and we have to adjust. Okay? So we need to have that thirst no? to learn all these things. Okay. And of course, very important is to have self-control. Okay? Especially when you're working from home, that self-control is very important that you have to guard your own working habits. No? Kasi wala nagbabantay sa atin. Of course, nandyan ang Diyos para bumantay sa atin. Problema, hindi natin napa- nararamdaman, hindi natin napapansin unless na nandyan si Diyos na para sa atin every time, na naiisip natin siya. Then, 
meron nagbabantay sa atin at nararamdaman natin. Kung wala, then what do we do is that we need to be able to do some measures to help us to do that. For example, one is to have a work journal to log, to review, and to reflect. So dito, pag work journal, sabi natin na, oh, hindi kailangan sabihin ng HR, oh, anong ginawa mo for today? Hindi na kailangan. No? So you have your own journal. Okay, from what time to what time, ito yung ginawa ko. From what time to what time, ito yung ginawa ko. No? Ilagay natin lahat. Pati kunyari, sabi natin, oh, from 1.20 to 1.40, uminom ako ng milk tea. <laughs> From 1.40 to 2 o'clock, kumain ako ng chichirya. Mga ganun. So, we write empty everything down. No? So that afterwards, we review. Ano ba nagawa ko? So, for today, how many hours was I productive? How many percent of my, of my working hours today was I productive? How many, how many percent naman ng I hindi ako naging productive. So that you can reflect, okay, how do I improve on it? Maybe next time, you have your own schedule na lalagay mo na, oh, dapat from this time to this time, ito. Then yung break time, ito. No? So you can implement it by yourself. No? So ito yung very important to, to help you out. No? So to, to be able to do better. Now, set high but achievable goals to reach. No? So, dun sa mga journal na ginawa natin, so we have to set goals. Na, okay, sige, gusto ko maging 80% productive. So, paano natin gagawin yan? So, you have to adjust your time. So, you, it has to be achievable. Hindi nyo sabihin, I want to be 100% productive. Kailangan pa rin naman natin ng break. And especially, working from home, it's not the same as working inside the office. No? Hindi natin kaya buong araw tayo nasa Zoom. No? Mahirapan tayo nun. So, meron tayong mga adjustment. Kailangan talaga maging achievable yung goals natin. No? So, yun yung kailangan natin ma-adjust. No? So, kailangan yung gawin na. Now, reward yourself for the goals na reach. O kung nagawa natin, o pwede naman tayo mapamilty sa sarili natin. Pwede yung mga ganyan. So, may mga ganyan tayo nagagawin to make yourself feel uh, parang motivated. No? So, once you set up that journal, regularly ginagawa na natin yan, mapapansin natin na, oy, hindi ko na kailangan ng boss ko para mag-check sa akin because I'm my own boss in checking my own. Okay? So, Yan yung paraan natin matutulungan sa sarili natin how to do the self. Okay? So, that's the acts. No? So, yun yung kailangan natin ma maalala in terms of how to manage uh, ourselves within the new normal. Now, just some final message here. Now, we have to understand right now, we have a tougher competition due to globalization. Ang kalaban natin sa trabaho, hindi lang yung mga kaklase natin, hindi lang natin yung mga kapilipino natin, kung hindi people in the world. That's why, for example, bakit ang daming call center agents dito sa Pilipinas, no? Imbis na sa ibang bansa. Because we are more, we, 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 we can do better and it also more cost efficient to people in the first world country. So, ganun din. So, ano naman yung kaya yung skill ko na pwede naman ako i-hire even sa other countries? Yun naman din iisipin natin. No? So, kailangan natin nandyan yung mga skills natin. Because remember, it's survival of the fittest. Kung sino yung pinaka-skillful, siya yung mas ma makakuha ng trabaho. Siya yung mas mabilis maka-attract ng mga uh, companies no, to hire them. And another thing also, mental health problems are real. So doon sa mga nagtatrabaho sa bahay, maraming mga mental health problems talaga. So we have to acknowledge that. We have to accept that. Okay, for us to be able to 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 be able to adjust to whatever that we need to adjust. Kung nahirapan na tayo, hindi na natin kaya yung emotions natin, then let's start working on that. Let's seek help. Okay, outside help. And lastly here, EQ is as important as IQ. So, kahit na gano katalino tayo, no, pag hindi natin kayang ma-deliver, because of our EQ. No? Hindi natin, medyo mababa yung EQ natin. For example, medyo hindi natin, hindi tayo okay. So kahit na gano'ng katalino tayo, kahit na skillful tayo, hindi pa rin tayo makakapag-perform. So it has to be both EQ and IQ. So we have to work on our emotional quotient, meaning to say, mas kaya natin i-manage ang emotions natin, mas pag inis na inis na tayo, kaya pa natin magtrabaho. 
pagod na pagod na tayo, kaya pa rin natin maka-recover. No? So, these things are very important. Kasi nowadays, hindi na kung sino pinakamatalino. Wala na. No? Kung panahon dati ay, eh, ay, magaling na mat, magaling ka sa mat, magaling ka mag-compute. And nowadays, meron ka na nga chat GPT na yan. Kung gusto sa mga nakakalam, tanongin nyo lang, may sagot na kagad. So, hindi na yun ang pinakahinahanap na skill nowadays. Kung hindi, who are the ones who can handle the pressure of the environment? Who are the ones who can also um, um, kumbaga, with that, those pressure at kaya pa rin niya mag-excel. No? So, kaya niya mag-adjust, kaya niya mag-adapt, kaya niyang i-apply lahat ng mga skills niya within the environment na meron natin nowadays. So, with that, this is where I'll end my uh, discussion here. Wait lang. Last slide. Okay. So, again, also, uh, we are also on the hiring stage as well. No? So, we are actually uh, a review and tutorial center. We primarily focus on uh, college entrance test review programs. Uh, uh, also, for senior high school review program. So, we actually have currently have openings for chemistry teacher, for biology, earth science teacher, also the physics teacher, basically lahat ng different sciences. So, I'm sure here marami tayo mga engineering. So, welcome tayo mag-apply sa atin dito. So, mga sciences, lahat ng different sciences, um, we accept them. And then, of course, math as well. So, lalo na for engineering. No? And language teacher also. And of course, IT support specialists as well. So, yung mga engineering or computer related na work dito, we also are looking for you. No? And uh, client support specialist as well. So you can actually scan the QR code or you can also just look for us here at jobs180.com slash axachi and Aya here. Okay, so there we go. So Shadi, thank you. Thank you for that, Sir Robert. So to everyone, the floor is now open for questions. Um, pwede kayong maglagay sa comment section natin. Ayan. So first question, Sir, ako po muna yung mauna. Uh, what would you advise to freshies who are just entering the workforce and now they have to adapt to the hybrid or remote setup? Parang double whammy, Sir. Papasok pa lang sila sa office. Tapos ngayon, gagawin pa nila remote. So, ano po yung ano, ma-advise nyo, sir, sa kanila? Ano mga dapat nilang paghandaan? Okay, Ma'am Shari. So, basically, actually, ang maganda dyan sa mga freshies ngayon, no? hindi sila ganyan kalaking adjustments because nang galing na nga sila sa work from, or study from home environment na rin, yung mga online class na environment. So, medyo gamay na rin nila on how to handle the situation. But of course, Kahit sabihin natin naka 2 years na tayo na online or 3 years na online, nag adjust pa rin tayo no? doon sa environment na ganyan. Parang hindi pa pwede face-to-face -face na lang, di ba? Parang ganun. Hirap na hirap pa rin. But I'm sure with 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 the past experiences, mas makaka-adjust naman na ngayon. No? But aside from that, uh, yung pagdating naman sa sa trabaho naman, yun nga, yung mga skills na kailangan nilang ma-develop ma are very important. So yun yung malaking makakatulong sa kanila. Kaya kung ano man yung mga kailangan nila Let's say, depende sa, uh, sa work na papasok nila, kung ano yung mga requirements, no? ano yung mga skills na kailangan, ano yung mga applications sa kailangan na matutunan, yun yung kailangan nilang ma-practice na ngayon pa lang, no? masimulan na nila. Ayan, thank you for that, sir. So, next question po. Uh, if, if we may ask, what would you say, sir, are the perks and benefits of joining the industry you're in? Like um, education, um, learning, ganyan po. So to everyone who's wondering, is this the right um, path for me? Is this the next step for me? Um, what would you say are the perks and benefits po? Well, the perks of uh, being in an education industry is that, of course, number one is really the fulfillment. That if you really have the passion to teach, that when you, when, when you see a student that you taught na parang talagang uh, nang, nang simula ng, let's say, bumabaksak, tapos biglang maganda na yung score. So, kahit na, 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 na nabanggit pa lang niya yung score pa lang niya, pwedeng maluha ka na kagad na parang, oy, nakatulong ako ng malaki kagad. So, that's one, no? That's one. And of course, uh, kasi that's from the tutorial side namin or even the review na parang, oy, nagstimula siya sa amin na itong school ay eh, talagang hindi siya posible pumasa. But because of the perseverance, because of the guidance, na, oy, umabot tayo na, pumasa na talaga, at the end, sobrang yung tuwa na parang, sinasabi na na, without you, hindi kami makakapasok. 
no so malaking bagay sa kanila yon so parang ang laki ng tulong now aside from that no aside from that yung pagdating din naman sa in terms of on the side naman ng mga let's say sa job seekers no sa side natin aside from the fulfillment also is that in terms of yung flexibility mas flexible hindi siya yung let's say the typical uh, uh, let's say 9 to 5 job kasi pag 9 to 5 job so, let's say buong araw nito tayo sa office ganun type pero dito kasi mas maraming kumbaga mamiyang konti ay magtuturo ka mamiyang konti ay magtsecheck ka mamiyang konti ay magdidesign ka ng lecture mo mamiyang konti magtsecheck ka ng test paper so medyo suitable siya doon sa mga hindi nila kayang na parang one type of work lang the whole day yung magsasawa sila matatama rin sila so ito yung medyo ganyan na maganda no so like like for example sa case namin dito so yun yung mag- yun yung advantage so, minsan may gagawin ka pang iba no kahit sa pagdesign pa lang so nagagamit yung iba't ibang skills natin yun yung, yun yung maganda rin oh yun and of course kung sabihin natin na normally in the education industry pag let's say kuya sa mga let's say engineering na talaga tayo no katulad kanina I, I heard also yung question na apang nagpo-prepare for the board exam or kapag kaka-graduate ko pa lang no ngayon do I look for a job no actually ito yung pinaka suitable pagdating sa mga jobs pagdating sa industry namin with regards to the virtual uh, centers no so this is the good time that you that you apply to us that okay while waiting uh, pwede tayong mag-apply tapos Uh, after nakagraduate na tayo, tapos habang na, na, nakapasa na tayo ng board exam, no, it's possible na makasaya sa industry namin is really come and go. Mga two years, three years, that's no more or less the turn around, na uh, turnover time, parang ganun. So, maganda yun na parang, oh, habang naghihintay tayo, ito yung pwede natin pasukan muna. Parang ganyan. And, and the good thing din, for example, kung engineering nga tayo, let's say, magtuturo tayo ng math sa amin dito. No? So, while you are teaching the students, you are also preparing for your board exam as well na rin. Uh-oh. So, malaking tulong, no? And of course, you have your co-workers also, yung mga co-teachers natin. Ay, pag di ko marunong, meron ka pang pwedeng matanungan. <laughs> Yan yung mga advantage, if ever. <laughs> Ayan. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, another comment from the crowd. Forever feel, feeling and looking young. Ayan, hindi tumatanda pag nasa academe or nasa teaching field. Laging mm-hmm. bata. Ayan. So thank you thank you for sharing your um story Sir Robert. So um the Grad Prep 2023 committee prepared a certificate po. So this one I'll read through it. So this certificate of appreciation um is presented to Sir Robert Pangilinan for his invaluable time and expertise as guest speaker on 2023 graduating students preparation program held on the 15th of March 2023 at Fayette University Santa Cruz Manila signed by Miss Mary Grace Chua OIC for Student Assistance Services Office and Engineer Virgilio Zacarias Jr. Director for 2023 Grads Prep Committee Acting Chairperson for EE and ECE Department. Sir Robert, again, thank you so much for accepting our invite and we hope that we can invite you again for future sessions in other universities naman po. Thank, thank you, you thank very you. much also. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Robert. Ayan. Thank you. <laughs> so to everyone, we'd also like to acknowledge um, Engineer Virgilio Zacarias Jr., He's, um, I think he's watching live, the director of 2023 Grads Prep Committee. So thank you so much, sir, for um, trusting Jobs 180 again to power this um, event. Po. Ayan. So let's move on to our next topic. So next topic is motivation, productivity, and problem-solving skills. So this will be discussed by Ms. Angelica Maitria, Talent Acquisition Specialist over at FactSet. Ms. Angelica graduated with a bachelor's degree in psychology at the University of Perpetual Health System, Delta. She started as an intern in FactSet under the employer relations team, and now she is a, she is a TA specialist handling the sales, external and internal hiring. Ayan. So let's welcome to the screen Ms. Lika Tria. Hi, ma'am. How are you? Hi, Ms. Shari. I'm good. How about you? Um, so, we see your deck on the <laughs> screen. Ayan po. So, we leave you to it. So, I'll be back for the Q&A. So, okay, thank you. 
Thank you. Okay, so good morning, everyone. So I'm Lika. So I'll be discussing with you the motivation, productivity, and problem-solving skills. So before that, I would like to say thank you to Jobs 180 for giving us an opportunity to be part of this event. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so our agenda for today would be to define ano nga ba yung motivation and productivity. Then let's see kung meron ba silang relationship with one another. And I will also be sharing you some tips on how will you keep yourselves motivated and productive. And then once we're done with motivation and productivity, we will be proceeding with some problem-solving skills. Okay, so let's define what is motivation. So motivation, actually, it gives purpose or directions in terms of the behavior of a human. Meaning, ito yung nagbibigay ng, uh, ito yung nagiging dahilan kung bakit tayo nag -e exert ng effort to accomplish a certain task or to accomplish a certain goal. So for example, you are motivated to finish all of your subjects because you would like to graduate. So that is your push. So yung, uh, the reason why you keep um, passing or uh, ginagawa nyo lahat para makas makapasa sa mga subjects ninyo, it is because you would like to graduate and find a job after your graduation. So ito yung nagiging dahilan kung bakit natin ginagawa yung mga bagay. Okay, so there are actually two types of motivation. So we have intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So let's start first with intrinsic. So when we say intrinsic motivation, the purpose of validation of this one is actually we enjoy what we're doing. Meaning, ito yung habang ginagawa natin as yung isang bagay, na enjoy natin yung process ng paggawa nito. And most of the time, the emotions that we experience for this is actually pleasant. So just like in the screen, we have enjoyment, freedom, relaxation, because as mentioned, na enjoy natin yung ginagawa natin. The relaxation because we know that we can control the situation. We know kung paano natin mas mahahandle yung uh, mga plan or yung certain task na ginagawa natin. And most of the rewards are coming from within you as well. So yun, may enjoyment tayo, may pleasure because as mentioned nga, nai-enjoy mo yung ginagawa mo. So intrinsic motivation is something that is within you. And then on the other hand naman, we have the extrinsic motivation. So ang extrinsic motivation, it's coming from the outside naman. So ang purpose of validation for this is actually the benefits that we are getting from participating in that certain task. So for example... You join a contest kasi meron siyang cash incentives, meron ka makukuhang medal, o kaya naman meron siyang certificate. And then most of the time, the emotions that we experience for this is actually tension and pressure. Though, meron pa rin namang... Um, pleasure or mayroon pa rin naman pleasant experience for that. Kasi we, sometimes we enjoy the challenge. We are hyped or we are excited to, to finish this certain goal kasi we know that we're gonna get something from it. Diba? Pero we are also pressured kasi of course we're thinking na kailangan ko gawin yung best ko for this para makuha ko tong certain goal na to. Para makuha ko tong certain reward na to. Okay, that's why most of the rewards that we have for extrinsic motivation is actually social or material awards. So for this one naman, um, sometimes we are not just intrinsically motivated and minsan naman hindi lang din tayo extrinsically motivated. There are scenarios where we are both intrinsically and extrinsically motivated. So ano ba yung mga sample na yun or ano ba yung mga ganong scenario? So for example... You are doing your thesis because you wanted to finish it within the timeline or within the deadline. And aside from that, you wanted your thesis to be awarded as best in thesis or outstanding thesis. So you are extrinsically motivated because you're going to get something from it. Eh. If you know that you're going to do your best, if you're going to um, complete your thesis ahead um, within the timeline, there is a possibility na pag nagustuhan siya ng panel magiging outstanding thesis siya or makakapasa kayo or maka, uh, hindi niya na kailangan mag-retake pa or mag, uh, bumalik ulit sa for the um, thesis defense. 
di ba? But then, at the same time, you are intrinsically motivated because you enjoy what you're doing. Meaning, you enjoy collaborating with your teammates, you enjoy gathering data, you enjoy conducting surveys. Kaya minsan, hindi natin napapansin, we are both intrinsically and extrinsically motivated because aside from the reward that we are gonna get from completing that task or that goal, we are also intrinsically motivated because we enjoy the process of what we're doing. Okay, so now that we have um, identified ano nga ba ang motivation, now let's proceed with productivity. So for, for productivity, it is actually a measure of how efficiently a person completes a task. So meaning productivity, this is already the results or the proof of your hard work. So ito na yung uh, nagiging proweba ng mga ginagawa ninyo. So for productivity, it doesn't necessarily mean kung gaano karami yung nagawa mo eh. It also means na yung quality ng ginagawa mo. Um, at some point, meron siyang uh, quantity or quality, but at the same time, we're also testing here yung quality ng ginawa mo. Okay, so for example, you have your exam this coming Friday to exam for that and then meron din kayong dapat ipasa na project. How will you be able to make sure that you will be productive? So for example, for this day, you're gonna set a timeline na for this time or for an hour and a half, I will be reviewing for this subject. And then the second half naman, I'm gonna take a break for 5 to 10 minutes and then um, once I'm back, I'm, I'm gonna allot again um, an hour and a half para naman makomplete tong project na to. And in that project, you're not just ensuring na mapapasa mo siya on time or matatapos mo siya on time. You are also ensuring na mapuprovide mo or mailalagay mo sa project na yun lahat ng um, details na pwede mong i-provide and to make sure na yung quality ng binibigay mo or ipapasa mong project would be enough for you to get a high grade. Okay, so that is for productivity. So now we have defined ano nga ba ang motivation and productivity. Now let's see if there's a relationship between motivation and productivity. So based on the study last 2019 conducted by Aliyu, there is actually a significant relationship between motivation and productivity. Diba? We usually hear na the higher the motivation is, the higher the productivity. So if it's balanced, kasi the reason why it's that, it's because merong nagpupush eh. So you are more productive if you know the purpose of what you're doing. You have the reason why you're doing this. Diba? And while you are being motivated, you are more encouraged to complete this certain goal. Dahil you know that you're gonna um, be happy with the results or you're going to get something from it. So that's why you have to make sure that balance your motivation and productivity. And what if naman mababa ang motivation then mataas ang productivity? Do you think that would still affect the, um, the outcome of your goal or your task? Of course, it's still going to affect the outcome. So at this point, if mababa ang motivation and mataas ang productivity ng isang tao, they tend to do things um, on a routine basis or on a daily basis. Diba? Paulit-ulit na yung ginagawa nila. At dumadating na sa point na tinatanong na nila yung sarili nila, bakit ko nga ba ito ginagawa? Ano yung purpose ko para gawin to? Bakit nagiging paulit-ulit na itong ginagawa ko? Kasi um, you know that you are being productive, but at the same time, you don't know already your purpose. Oh, na, naliligaw ka na, hindi mo na alam kung bakit nga ba ginagawa mo yung isang bagay. So if your motivation is low and your productivity is high, this is the part where you tend to ask questions. You tend to ask yourself, why, why am I doing this? Ano yung purpose ko para gawin pa to? Diba? And then, how about naman kapag maba, mataas ang motivation and then mababa ang productivity? Do you think that could still affect? Of course, still the same with the others. Kapag um, 
it still uh, it would still affect if mataas ang motivation and mababa ang productivity. What would be the example for that? So for example, um, meron kayong exam. You are motivated to pass all your subject. You are motivated na makapasa, makagraduate on time, but then your productivity is low, meaning hindi mo ginagawa yung mga dapat mong gawin. You know what you're supposed to do, but then you are not doing enough for you to be able to achieve the outcome or the goal that you want. So for example, may exam ka ng fr- this coming Friday. You know that you're ha- uh, you're going to have your exam this coming Friday. Nag-review ka. But then there are a lot of distractions or after 10 minutes, nag-stop ka na sa pag-review. After 10 minutes, nag-stop ka na gawin tong project. O kaya naman, minsan, um, nagagahul ka na sa oras because, um, uh, for example, deadline na, da- na by Friday yung uh, project na ginagawa mo and then nagahul ka na sa oras, you, you were only able to do it on Thursday night. So, do you think you're gonna get the outcome that you want? Do you think you're gonna get the um, goal that you want? There's a possibility na hindi. Kasi na-rush mo lahat. So, you are motivated enough, but then your productivity doesn't match your motivation. That is why the outcome of your project or the outcome of your task is still um, doesn't meet yung ginugusto mong standard. So, let's make sure na laging balance sa ating motivation and productivity. Though, there are times naman na uh, mahirap din talaga na i-balance yung both. But you have to make sure then na you're gonna take a break. It's not a mistake or it's not wrong to take a break from everything. Okay? Just make sure lang din na kapag nag-take ng break, you're gonna bounce back and do what you do best. Okay, so now we have defined the motivation and productivity and then the relationship with one another. Let's now proceed with some tips on how you will keep yourselves motivated and productive. So first, you have to put your goals on the calendar or anywhere where you can see it. It could be in your planner, sa notebook, o kaya naman meron kang poster dyan na nakalagay yung mga goals mo. Not just your goals. Um, you can also put naman yung mga to-do list mo or yung mga tasks that you would like to do so that it would be a reminder for you of the things that you need to do and the reason why you're doing this. But it would be a constant reminder for you na, okay, the reason why I'm doing this, the reason why I'm studying because I'm targeting to graduate this coming sem. O kaya naman, the reason why I'm completing this project because I wanted to get a higher grade from it. Diba? So, yun yung mga, um, yun yung mga, um, what you call this one, yun yung pwede yung gawin for you to be able to um, be, to keep yourselves motivated and productive. So, aside from that, um, you have to be organized with the task. So, organize task into smaller and manageable parts. So, for this one, you must know what to prioritize. If you know it's urgent, then make sure it's going to be your top priority. Diba? If you know na yung project na to or yung task na to would not be, um, what you call this one, would not be, um, hindi pa naman siya kailangan ipasa, then you can definitely um, put it at last. So you just have to make sure that you know what to prioritize. You have to make sure na at a certain day, you will be able to accomplish it. Okay, so for this one, um, of course, hindi naman, uh, we cannot do all things all at once, diba? So you have to make sure that you know what to prioritize, tapos take it to smaller, tapos uh, make sure lang then that you will be able to accomplish it on the timeline that you have provided. Because you need to, to make sure that you are sticking with that timeline. Okay, so next we have to identify and to eliminate your distractions. Okay, so for this one, you need to identify and to eliminate. So distractions, of course, it's not healthy when you uh, when you keep your when you want to keep yourself motivated and productive, because it will tend or it will give you um reason na parang it will provide you excuses na 
like, okay, pwede mo naman gawin yan next time, eh, pwede mo naman um, pag-igihan na lang next time. So, as much as possible, if you wanted to keep yourself motivated and productive, you have to identify and eliminate those distractions. When we say eliminate uh, those distractions, it doesn't necessarily mean na tanggalin mo siya agad. No, I know it sometimes it's not easy to lessen yung mga distractions. Like, for example, you are reviewing and then hindi mo naiiwasan yung mag-check ng mag-check sa phone mo to check your social media, mag-chat with your friends. So as much as possible, try to eliminate it. Um, take one step at a time. Hindi mo naman siya pwedeng biglain na for 30 minutes, ito lang gagawin mo. No, if you can, if you would like to um, bawasan siya ng paunti-unti, that would be great. That would be helpful for you. Just make sure that you will be able to identify or alamin yung mga distractions na alam mong makakapagtanggal ng focus mo sa goal mo. Okay? So, next we have is to reward yourself for your victories, either small or big victories. Okay? So, for this one... Do not forget, always do not forget to congratulate yourself. When we say reward yourself, hindi lang naman siya yung mga uh, material things. Eh. Hindi lang naman yung bibili ka ng pag, bibili ka ng ganito, bibili ka ng ganyan. Um, you can also reward yourself by congratulating yourself or by saying to yourself na um, thank you for doing your best. Thank you for doing a great job. Kasi of all people... Ikaw yung nakakaalam eh. Ikaw yung nakakaalam ng mga ginagawa mo o yung ginawa mo kung gano'ng kahirap yung naging process for you to be able to achieve that. Hindi ka man i-congratulate ng mundo or hindi ka man i-celebrate ng mundo, at least you learn how to celebrate yourself. Learn to celebrate the victories that you have. Learn to celebrate your accomplishments. Diba? So, you do not just rely kung paano ka i-congratulate ng iba. Kasi you know to yourself that you can do it to yourself. Na kaya mong sabihin sa sarili mo na thank you for doing your best. Congratulations for doing a job well done. Okay, so for smaller big victories, lahat yan, if you consider it as a victory, then it's a victory. It's an accomplishment. Okay, and then you also have to give yourself breaks. When we say give yourself breaks, I know hindi naman lahat tayo kaya yung magpahinga ng matagal o magbakasyon ng matagal because we still have responsibilities at home, at school, or at work. So kahit na ganun pa man, um, let's make sure that we are still giving ourselves the break that we deserve. So for example, um, you find yourself na hindi ka na motivated and hindi ka na rin productive. And that is okay. As mentioned a while ago, that is okay. Kasi not all of the time, we are motivated and productive. Pero if you find yourself already in that situation... Try to breathe in. Try to breathe. Try to um, take a break. Connect with yourself. Reconnect with yourself. And then, kapag feeling mo okay ka na or alam mo na yung um, dahilan o ano yung purpose mo kung bakit mo ito ginagawa, then you can bounce back. You can continue what you're doing. Just a reminder or just uh, always remember na hindi tayo robot. Napapagod tayo. And we need to take a rest. Okay? So, for us to ensure na motivated and productive tayo, we must know also how to take a rest. Kasi hindi sa lahat ng oras, kakayanin din ang katawan natin, yung mga tasks na ginagawa natin. So, give yourself the break that you deserve. Give yourself the peace that you deserve. Okay, so aside from yung physical health ninyo, you also have to make sure that your mental health is well um, or okay din yung inyong mental health. Kasi of course, kapag merong tayong uh, well-being na hindi okay, it could definitely affect. So make sure to always give yourself the break that you need, magpahinga. So that you will keep yourselves motivated then or once you come back from, from your break, you know already or you uh, remember kung ano yung dahilan, kung bakit ninyo to ginagawa, why you keep doing this, bakit pa ulit-ulit tayo sa ganitong sitwasyon. Because you know to yourself that you have a goal to reach. 
Okay, so that's our, some tips on how you will keep yourselves motivated and productive. So we're done already with motivation and productivity. So now let's go with problem-solving skills. So for the problem-solving skills, so problem-solving skills are the ability to identify problems, brainstorm and analyze answers, and implement the best solutions. So bakit nga ba importante itong problem-solving skills? So it is actually important because most of the companies or most of the employers are actually looking for a candidate na merong problem-solving skills or a candidate that is potential in helping them in solving the problem. So you will encounter, once you start um, attending interviews, you will encounter questions coming from the HR or coming from the hiring managers, uh, scenarios where they will, uh, they will ask you, kung ano yung mga situation or scenario na encounter mo and how did you handle that or how did you solve that kind of problem because we need to see if you have the problem solving skills or if you are a potential candidate for this position who will be able to solve yung mga uh, scenario or situation or yung mga problema that you will encounter while working already in the role that you will that you are applying for okay so that is for the problem solving skills and why is it important so now let's proceed with the five primary steps in problem solving so for this one first you know uh, you need to analyze contributing factors when we say analyze contributing factors, this is the part where we need to identify ano ba yung root cause ng problema or ano yung main source ng problema. We need to make sure na alam din natin kung ano yung problema for us to know ano yung um, root cause nito para mas madali para sa atin malaman kung ano yung root cause. So dito na pumapasok yung pag-gather ng information, pag-gather ng data, and ang pag-analyze ng mga information. Okay? And then next we have to generate interventions. So generate interventions, dito na pumapasok yung ating tinatawag na brainstorming. So when we say brainstorming, you have to collaborate with your team for you to gather as much as information that you need. So for you to be able to do that, of course, you have to communicate with your team because hindi naman sa lahat ng oras sa atin lang nanggagaling yung information or yung idea. It is also better if we're gonna ask our team members for their inputs para hindi siya para um, malito kayo, kundi para mas pagkaroon kayo ng iba pang idea. Kasi yung idea mo, minsan hindi lang din naman yun yung idea ng team members mo. Meron din silang naisip na idea which you can um, combine to see kung makakatulong ba to sa problema or makakasolve ba to doon sa problema. And then once you have brainstormed or once you have collaborated with your team members, once na uh, nakapag-provide na sila ng mga solutions, we need to evaluate the solutions that you have provided. So this is this part you will also need you will also need to uh, collaborate with your team because you need to make sure na um, ano yung mga solutions or ano yung sa mga nalista yung solutions yung pwede nating tanggalin or yung pwede nating i-combine with others or with other solutions na na-provide. Because you have to eliminate some to make sure or to narrow it down kasi it would be confusing for you kapag maraming so, um solutions and then hindi naman siya lahat matetest or hindi naman lahat yon ay matetest ninyo. And then once you have done that, once you have start evaluating yung mga tingin nyo na mag-work dun sa problema, you have to implement a plan. And when we say implement a plan, this is the time where you will communicate with your team members. You will still continue communicating with your team members and providing the process kung paano ninyo gagawin itong plano na to. Kung paano ninyo gagawin para ma-ensure na itong solution na meron tayo would be effective enough to solve this problem. 
Okay, so um, implementing a plan will actually help you to determine if the solution that you have provided will work or not. Okay, and then last would be the assess the solution's effectiveness. So for this one, once na makapag-implement na kayo ng plan, once na identify nyo na yung mga possible solutions na pwede ninyong gawin, this is the time where you need to put it in action. You need to test kung talaga bang effective yung um, solution na, na uh, what you call this one, na pinrovide ng team for you to solve that. So kung hindi man siya mag-work, then you can go back with evaluating the solutions. Kunin niyo yung mga na-narrow down niyo doon, ano yung mga hindi niyo pa natatry, ano yung mga possible pa, hanggang sa mahanap ninyo yung pwedeng um, or yung uh, solution na mag-work doon sa problem. Okay, so those are the five primary steps in problem solving. So, ang mga aside from the problem solving skills, ang mga skills that we have for this one would be data gathering, um, brainstorming, project management, collaborating, and teamwork. Okay, so now that we have discussed itong five primary steps in problem solving, let's proceed with improving your problem-solving skills. First is you must learn how to identify problems. When we say learn how to identify problems, it's not just focus kung ano eh, kung alam, ma -point, ma pinpoint mo agad kung ano yung problema. It is also being proactive na alam mo na, okay, itong part na to, hindi na siya mag-work or itong solution na to or yung ganitong process natin, hindi na siya mag-work. So, ano yung pwede kong gawin bago pa siya maging problema? So, it is being proactive kapag may mga bagay na alam ninyo or napapansin na ninyo na hindi na mag-work. Okay? So, you have, for this kind of, um, for this kind of scenario, you must practice yung questioning. Practice um, asking questions. Remember that you are uh, do not be afraid to ask questions because this will give you the information that you need. So continue um, asking questions until you gather as much as information as you need. Kasi de ba when we ask questions, merami tayong nalalaman, merami tayong nagigather na information. And when we're listing it down, we can see na or na narrow it down na natin na ah okay, so ganito pala yung mga so, if ganito yung, um, what you call this one, if ganito yung process natin, there is a possibility na maging ganito yung result. So, you are already identifying yung magiging problema even before maging problema pa siya. And in that scenario, pwede mo na siya agad maiwasan before pa siya maging problema mismo. Okay? So, next, you also have to think digitally. So, we are actually, or we all know naman, we are already in a modern world where technology keeps on evolving. So, I would definitely suggest to utilize and to take advantage of the technology that we have for you to be able to solve yung mga, um, yung mga problema na pwede nating masolve using technology. So, do not be afraid to do research about innovative and new technology kasi most of the time or may mga time din naman na itong mga technology na to would actually give us more efficient solutions to the problem that we have. Okay? So, do not just focus with yung mga pwede natin pang makuha sa uh, ibang sources. You also have to consider yung technology na meron na tayo because most of the time, the technology that we have is actually evolving and who knows, maybe those um, or the problems that we have or yung mga na-encounter natin na mga problems like for example, mga technical problems, it actually be located doon sa mga technology that we have. So you, ha you need to start uh, thinking digitally because this will also help you once you start uh, working. Okay, and then you also need to collaborate. As mentioned a while ago, you need to collaborate kasi hindi lang naman sa'yo nanggagaling lahat ng idea. You have to get, um to collaborate for you to be able to gather perspectives, more perspectives from your team to gather or to eliminate bias kasi you have to make sure that um, when you collaborate kasi with people, 
sinasabi natin, diba, two heads are better than one. So, you have to make sure that you know how to collaborate or you are open with suggestions of your team members kasi this will help you. This will help you to narrow down yung mga possible solutions for you. For you to be able to solve the problem that occur or yung bago pa lang mag-occur, um, maiwasan na agad yung mga ganoong problema. And then, you also have to learn how to adapt. Okay, so the world or our world is constantly changing. So before pandemic, lahat tayo naka-work on site, naka-face-to-face classes. But when the lockdown started, we had to transfer from uh, work from home. Uh, we have to transfer from work on site to work from home or from uh, face-to-face to virtual classes. Diba? And now na medyo kontrolado na natin ang COVID-19, meron na tayong tinatawag na hybrid setup wherein merong mga days na naka-face-to-face uh, class kayo, meron din namang mga naka-virtual. So you must learn how to adapt with that situation. You must learn how to adapt then and be more comfortable na every idea can, could come from anyone. Hindi lang siya sa iyo manggagaling. So you have to um what to call this one? You have to trust your team. You have to adapt with the situation na okay, may bagong information kaming nakuha and that information would be um useful for this um for this problem. So you have to be open na okay, tatanggapin ko tong prob- uh, tatanggapin ko tong um idea na to because it would be helpful. So lagi yung tatandaan na your teammates are not your enemy. So they are there to make sure that you will be o- also able to meet the same goal. Kasi lahat naman kayo may um pare-pareho ng goal, which is for example, which is to um pass your thesis or pass your subject o kaya naman matapos or matuwa si client with your um with the solution that you have provided. So lahat naman kayo may um specific goal or may um common goal for this. So you must learn how to adapt and be comfortable sa mga sinishare na information sa yo especially if you know that it would be beneficial for the team. Okay? So that's how you improve your problem-solving skills. And before we end, I would like to share a quote from Zig that the first step in solving a problem is to recognize it does exist. So when we have a problem, either personal or school or work-related, we have to acknowledge it. Hindi dapat natin tinatakbuhan ng problema because the problem will stay a problem kung hindi natin siya isosolve. So, i-acknowledge natin siya, mag-plan ahead kung paano natin siya masosolve, and then do or um, put it in action, yung plan na ginawa ninyo for you to be able to solve the problem. So, as mentioned, wag natin tatakbuhan ng pre- um, problema. A uh, problem is meant to be solved. Okay? So, to learn more about our openings, you might visit our Jobs180 account at www.jobs180.com slash careers. Or you may also visit our company website at www.factset.com slash careers. You may also connect with us through my email, which is angelicamay.via at factset.com. Or you may send an email to our team, which is at manila.recruiting at factset.com. So to know more about FactSet, you may also visit our social media account. So we have Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channel. So that would be all for today. So I hope everyone, you uh, learned something from this topic. And again, thank you for attending this event. And thank you as well for Jobs180 for inviting us to be part of this event. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for that, Ms. Lika. So to everyone, unfortunately, we have no more time for questions. Uh, Ms. Lika, I'm sorry, we have to let the students go. Po. Ayan. It's okay. It's okay. Lika, I will present the certificate. Po, ano. So um, this is prepared by the FEATI Grads Prep Committee. Po. Um, 
we would like to award the Certificate of Appreciation, the FIAT University Graduating Students Preparation Program in coordination with the Student Services, Student Assistance Services Office. So we present this certificate to Ms. Angelica Tria for her invaluable time and expertise as guest speaker on the 2023 Graduating Students Preparation Program held on the 15th of March 2023 at FIAT University Santa Cruz, Manila. Signed by Ms. Grace Chua, OIC, Student Assistance um, Services Office, and Engineer Vilhilio Zacarias Jr., Director, 2023 Grads Prep Committee, and Acting Chairperson for EE and ECE Department. Ms. Angelica, thank you, thank you so much for um, accepting our invitation po for this event. And we look forward to having you, ma'am, in future um, events po with other universities. Thank you, Ms. Angelica. Thank you, Ms. Shari. Have a great day po. Ayan. You too. So to everyone, we would like to invite you to apply to their um, career site. So it's on your screen. That's jobsearning.com slash factsets careers. So please don't forget to evaluate. Um, This will also be um the the um, basis of your attendance. So to everyone, we have two links. So one is the evaluation link and the other one is the um, attendance link. So, please also send your selfies to gechua at featu.edu.ph. So, here's the evaluation. We will also be putting this in the comment section. And then there's another one for attendance. And please make sure that you're using your feati email addresses so that you can access the forms. So, this one is under the control of Ms. Grace of the Student Services Assistance, a Student Assistance Services Office. Ayan. So please make sure to fill out the forms, two forms. So kindly make sure na natapos niyo po yun within the day. Yeah. So to officially close our session for this morning, we'd like to call on Engineer Virgilio Zacarias, Grad Prep Director 22 to 23, Acting Chairperson and Faculty for the College of Engineering of um, EE and ECE. Sir um, Zacarias? Good afternoon, everyone. At this point, we have reached the end of our first Grads Prep event for the school year 2022-2023. This activity has given the participants, our students, a lot of ideas and information that would be beneficial, especially when they start looking for jobs after graduation. For this, I would like to take this opportunity to show appreciation to our guest speakers from Jobs 180. Their presence has been invaluable in making this activity a success. To all the students who attended this activity, thank you for your participation and cooperation. And congratulations as well, as you have unlocked new tools for developing yourselves. The Grads Prep Committee and SASO would also like to thank the Office of the AVPAA, the deans, chairs, and heads of different colleges and departments, and the faculty members as well. We appreciate all of your support in this activity. Again, thank you very much and see you at the next activity. Thank you for that, Engineer Zakaria. So to everyone, please don't forget to um, fill out the links that we have provided. So there are two links. One is for evaluation and the other one is for attendance. So Please be advised that the recordings of this webinar will also be posted on Facebook and our YouTube channel of Chops180.com. So we um, invite everyone to join us for the next set of webinars that we will be hosting um, this week and next week. So please check our Facebook pages for the list of topics that we will be discussing in those sessions. And you're welcome to join anytime. So with that, our session ends today. Thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to having all of you in the workforce. So congratulations to the future graduates of Fayette University. Have a great day, guys, and stay safe. Look up, young man, look up and see. Now hail dear Fiatti. Blues
Oh, 